Welcome back. And now for the concluding part of our interview with Professor Yomi Akinyeye of the Department of History and Strategic Studies at the University of Lagos. I'd like us to turn to the most recent issue from Bakasa, which is the killing of 97 people in the peninsula. And let me begin by asking if you believe, uh, because the Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Jeffrey Onyama, said that that did not happen. I mean, he did ask the ministry to do some investigation. They claimed they did. They cooperated, uh, collaborated with the Nigerian embassy in Cameroon, in Yaoundé, in uh, Boa, the consulates in Boa, and in uh, Douala. And they confirmed, yes, there was the issue of taxation between the DO and the people in Bakasi Peninsula, but they could not confirm the number of deaths. So um, I have two questions here. Do you believe the government's findings, which have been corroborated by the Cameroonian government, and uh, is it possible, knowing the tension in the area, which has been building over time, is it possible that only 97 Nigerians have died, have been killed so far in the Bakasi Peninsula? Well, let me start with the first one. We have no other choice than to believe our foreign affairs, more so when they say they have done uh, their investigation. And uh, the other side also confirmed that there was no incident of killing. What would they have to gain to deceive uh, the country? about the fate of their citizen. That would be more than perfidious. But about the issue of uh, accumulation of death, I have my doubt that over this length of time, when there have been periodic reports of uh, issues and conflict between the Nigerians here and uh, Cameroonian authorities, the number is not likely to be as low as 97. But then, since the government is our only source of information, except we have independent sources of the government, we have no reason than to, uh, we have no choice other than to fall in line with the government figures. Well, the, this whole issue came up because it has brought up the issue of the Green Tree Agreements once again. We're hearing that being thrown around in the news a lot now. Um, the agreements were supposed to have expired in 2008, I beg your pardon, in 2011. Yes. Yes, and then the Cameroonian government decided to extend it by another two years, which ended in 2013. So uh, is the um, Green Tree Agreement still in effect? Because some people, some analysts have raised the question about the taxation issue and saying you're not supposed to tax Nigerians who live there. You have answered the question <laughs> yourself. It was given a five-year period. Mm. It uh, expired in 2011, and the Cameroonian government was gracious enough to extend it for another two years. So de facto, de jure, the provision that there will be no taxation has lapsed. And so you cannot uh, floor the Cameroonians for coming in to assert their sovereign right to tax people within their four walls. Maybe the problem people had was with the amount that were being taxed. You think it would, they were probably taxed unfairly. Um, fishermen were asked to pay 50,000 naira. I think this was supposed to be annually. And uh, the women, fishermen and women, were asked to pay 30,000 naira. And many of them complained and said, you know, why don't you reduce the tax to 25,000 naira? That makes it more reasonable. That is another issue. How did they arrive at this tax, this figure? There should be a credible way of ascertaining the income of the people. And that should be a fraction or a percentage of their income. Uh, that's an area where I think the Cameroonians have to do more work to justify the amount they have imposed on the people. They have to relate it to their income for it to make any sense. I, I see some discrepancies there in that region because the people say that these, they had already paid taxes before and they had paid to the Cameroonian customs, but they were not given receipts, which is why the DO couldn't believe that they had paid taxes and said, okay, you have to pay again. So it was almost like they were being taxed, you know, given, being given double taxes. And that is neither here nor there. <laughs> that I wouldn't know why somebody will pay tax. I I'm will not ask for such receipt. Yeah. This may be a uh, make-believe uh, story to whip up sentiments and uh, uh, have sympathy from the Nigerian mm -hmm. authorities. And it is, it's, it's, li it's highly doubtful that Cameroonian authorities will collect taxes without issuing receipts. 
Well, yes, I it, it is doubtful. doubtful. Yeah, yeah, it is. It does sound a bit doubtful. Now, I understand there is a 10-year agreement on citizenship in the peninsula. Um, after 10 years, people uh, should be able to decide which countries they belong to and others. Could you explain that? Because some people are saying, you know, there's still Nigerians, there's still Cameroonians. They don't know. Yeah, if the, the length of, I mean, the duration of the agreement, the interim period given, is for people to be able to make up their mind. If they have decided to stay on the other side after the period of grace given, they should regard themselves as Cameroonian and then be ready to subject themselves to the laws of uh, the sovereign state of Cameroon. On the other hand, if they want to stay there as a foreign community, that's a different thing. Then they can, register. Can they do that? Well, they can, there are Nigerians all over the world. There are Nigerians in Ghana, in Cote d'Ivoire, in every distance. And then the Nigerian government will then extend to them its diplomatic protection, which is part of what uh, embassies exist to do, particularly consulates, to protect the citizens of uh, their country in foreign countries. But does Nigeria have some you know, responsibility towards the Nigerians who live in Bakasi. Everywhere. Every country has responsibility towards its citizens who reside wherever they may be. Mm. I ask this question because the permanent ruler of Bakasi, local government area in uh, Cross River State, Eti Medet, said uh, of the killings in the area that the Nigerian government is not protecting her citizens. No, that, that would be a failure on the part of Nigeria. They should report. Nigeria should formally go into it if there are such cases. But you know, the Nigerian government does not, we don't have troops in Bakasi Peninsula. They have to withdraw. No, following. we don't have to. We, we stationing troops there amounts to aggression because mm -hmm. it's a foreign land. It, it's like I'm saying uh, the Cameroonians should have uh, troops in Cross River or any district. That is not record, that is not allowed under international law. Mm -hmm. the, once Nigerians have agreed to live there, Nigerian government will liaise with them for their security and protection. I'd like to add one final question. Uh, Day Spring Island, uh, discovered in 2014, was set up by the Nigerian government to relocate people coming from Bakasi. In, and some people, some internally displaced people from Bakasi now are saying, why don't you also relocate us to that island? Is there any reason why these people can't go there? There's no reason. If uh, the place is uh, conducive and... Uh, uh, enough to accommodate all of them, they should be encouraged to relocate and uh, settle there. And that will simplify the problem of uh, resettlement and relocation of uh, displaced Nigerians from the Bakasi. Professor Akinye, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. It's been my pleasure also coming. That's the program this week. Tell us what you think about the said number of Nigerians killed and are you satisfied with the government's response? Send your comments to at diplomatic chan or at amarachi underscore ubani. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.